Big budget blockbusters bank on box office success. Alliterations are fun, and so are superhero films. In the past two decades, they've managed to go from a relatively niche segment of cinema to an assured revenue stream for studios. The prevalence of these films is far more commonplace now than any time previously in the history of the medium. Sure, there were a few successful adaptations prior to the 21st century, but nothing close to the box office success of today. Many compare the rise of these films to that of the western genre, something that overtook the industry in full force but eventually fell to the wayside. Now our caped crusaders aren't quite at this point yet, but I think the best days of superhero films are now behind us. After all, the biggest film in the genre has just recently released, and the hype surrounding future films has nowhere to go but down. And I'll get to that point later. It's not wrong to make comparisons between superhero films and other oversaturated genres of the past. And as such, it wouldn't be out of the question to expect the mass market to eventually lose interest in superhero films. But I think it's more complicated than this. Much more complicated. The major box office success in superhero films this decade have been led by the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and other studios have tried to capitalize on this in the 2010s. But even with the occasional hit outside the MCU, nobody has tied together a universe in a cohesive manner as well as Marvel, even though some have tried. The proposition of a tied cinematic universe means that more films are prone to make back their budgets, just by gaining the viewers who remain invested in the overarching story. But Marvel's universe has been leading somewhere a story arc that has ended. But the point is, that there's no great narrative on the horizon that will realistically lead to another major event in this vein. Sure, they'll set up for something new, that's inevitable. But most of the general public will see this as the end for now. Public interest will die down after Endgame. At first, the drop-off may be slow, but it's only a matter of time before the entire genre suffers as well. If fatigue will set in, Avengers Endgame will be the catalyst that spurs disinterest. Not because of quality, but because it wraps up an 11-year story arc. And it's hard to expect anything like this to happen again. I mean, it's the first time it's been done, and anything else will just be seen as a copy. Much of that is the appeal of this series. It's something new and fresh in film. But as the Thanos storyline comes to a close, and old heroes are pushed aside, I think it will come to the detriment of the MCU, and superhero films as a whole. Is this my only basis for assuming these films are on the way out? No but I'll get to that later. Lots of things coming later. In the meantime, let's look back at superhero films before they saturated the film market. Historical context is important when trying to figure out what will happen in the future. And in the case of films especially, it's important to see how we got to where we are at. Adaptations of superheroes, especially from comic books, isn't a new thing. You had Superman serials in the 40s and onward. But there wasn't the precedent of massive success when these adaptations were made. What really kicks off the idea that superhero films could be massively successful is the 1978 Superman film. It came right after the success of Star Wars, where more fantastic ideas were being enjoyed by a larger audience than just the kids. Fantasy and escapism was profitable, and Superman came at the perfect time to appeal to a world that was more accepting to what would be previously seen as frivolous nonsense. I mean, in the decade prior, you had the Adam West Batman, which which certainly had a different direction. In the general public's eyes, this is just what superheroes and comic books were. Silly, campy, and lighthearted. But Superman worked. It was one major success for the superhero genre, but this wasn't the start of an oversaturated market. The sequels had diminishing returns, and the film franchise faded away with a whimper. But a decade later, we see 1989's Batman, a dark tale on what was considered by the mass market a character of levity. Now the comics had a darker tone already, but this wasn't how the average person saw the character. This film was big, really big. When it released, it was one of the largest box office hits of all time, and it was apparent superhero films could indeed work. And when something works in Hollywood, everybody wants to milk it for all it's worth. But at this point, only two films had actually worked in the genre and both of those include the most popular heroes of the day. It was unknown whether the box office success could be replicated with lesser known franchises, but studios were sure willing to try, and these growing pains would result in a very rough decade for the genre. Batman got weird and colorful. The franchise seemingly died within a few poorly planned sequels. Other franchises saw films that were successful, but not critically acclaimed. It seemed as though the success of superhero films would be relegated to a flash in the pan. 
But as a new decade approached, this mindset would change. After the 90s had somewhat lackluster outings, commercially or critically, the first X-Men film hit in 2000, and it was received pretty well. Two years later, Spider-Man released and followed a similar trajectory. The success of these two pictures spawned franchises, and each of these generally received praise and made back their budgets with ease. Just like the decade prior, studios saw potential in getting in the action many tried to capitalize on the relatively newfound popularity of superheroes. You had your daredevils, your ghost riders, your cat women. Yeah, there was a lot of bad in that. But in this mix, you saw some real winners. Christopher Nolan made a successful Batman film, Batman Begins. The industry was keeping strong. 2008, the year it all changes. Marvel launches the MCU with Iron Man, and one of the biggest hits of all time, The Dark Knight, changes many people's perspective on what a superhero film could be. Now as the decade passed, we saw 47 films between Marvel and DC properties. That's almost five films a year, and many of these were major box office successes. Four of the five top grossing films in 2018 were superhero films. The market obviously hasn't grown bored. Well, not yet. A lot of this success came from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This in turn inspired DC to try their own hand at a similar concept with less admirable results. The X-Men were trucking along this whole time with some hits and some misses. But with all these films, all this exposure, does it ensure that we will see fatigue? Personally, I think so. We've seen a cycle of early hits in the 70s and 80s, a building of franchises and cliches in the 2000s, an overload in the 2010s, and very popular satire works of these films that parody the expectations of superheroes we're all so familiar with. And now, we reach Endgame. Over the course of 11 years and 21 films, it all leads up to one event. I see it as a balloon, filling up over time before it bursts. The story is wrapped up, audiences will feel content, and some won't return for future installments. And I assure you, whatever Endgame makes at the box office, it's a number that won't be surpassed any time by a superhero film. Now after Endgame, future MCU installments won't be contributing to this larger story audiences have grown attached to. Instead, they'll need a new enemy, a new goal. And to be honest, I don't think it'll work quite as well the next time. But expect to see a large fall off in box office numbers for Marvel superhero films over the next few years. It's the nature of ending any story. You're gonna lose some people in the transition when you want to start again. The hype bubble will burst after Endgame. It's just inevitable. I know I talk a lot about Marvel, but they're really the biggest player in this game. And yes, Disney has acquired Fox. And with that, the properties of the X-Men and Fantastic Four. But they aren't planned to appear anytime soon. Let's say, five to six years. By this point, I assume the oversaturated market will be in decline. I'm not sure if this will bring back those they've lost. Now, some of you may be thinking, but Tyler, Marvel isn't the only studio making superhero movies. DC has the Batman. That's all true, but I feel a lot of the hype surrounding other superhero films are directly correlated to the hype surrounding the MCU. So if Marvel falls, so does everybody else. But this is all in the short term. The real reason I think superhero films are on their last legs is because, well, movie theaters themselves don't have much time. Surprising, I know. The real threat to movie theaters is the relatively new digital landscape for all media. Ticket sales are down for young people, people who are growing up in a world where media is short and communication is essential. Younger people who are less interested in sitting in a movie theater for two hours subject to just watching a film when the norm for them is much shorter content. And while this demographic may not be a majority of theater goers, as the years go on, this number will rise. You wonder why ticket prices are going up? It's because sales are going down. Margins for potential profit while running a theater are slim. In some cases, companies like Disney demand a higher percentage of these ticket sales. This is because Disney is easily the largest producer of films, and this nearly monopolistic corporation has the power to make such demands. I mean, combined, Disney and Fox has a market share of around 36%. And there's little reason to believe movie theaters will bounce back anytime soon. Video streaming is big, and even if you can't see the biggest releases on day one, many people have started to opt out of going to the theaters, with the assumption that said films will come to one of the several streaming services within months. Speaking of streaming, Disney is launching a streaming service that costs less per month than an average movie ticket. It just becomes another obstacle theaters are trying to overcome. Disney is quite key to a lot of this, if you haven't caught on. Again, vast market share comes with a great deal of power and influence. Franchise films are king in the modern day, and Disney has the biggest franchises. 
I mean, what if Disney decided to just release blockbuster films on their streaming service or digital download instead of theaters? It could ensure hundreds of millions of people subscribe to the service, and remove the prospect of sharing any profits with the movie theaters. They now have nearly 40% of the market share, but that could possibly be higher soon if Disney starts taking advantage of their new IPs from Fox. This means they could easily spell the demise of theater chains, if they wanted. And from a business perspective, this makes a great deal of sense. Instead of $10 once or twice a year from the average filmgoer, you could guarantee $7 a month from nearly everybody. Frankly, I feel in 10, 20 years, movie theaters will go the way of video rental stores. They offered a different experience at the cost of convenience, which ultimately led to their demise. The kids today that are not interested in seeing films in the cinema will be in their 30s, and they won't take their own kids to see movies either. It's only a matter of time before movie theaters are gone, and by that extension, superhero films. Well, at least in theaters. So as we look forward, I think you'll see the superhero genre slowly fade away or at least become less integral to the box office. For the first few years, there will still be some notable successes. Given the fragile state of movie theaters and the oversaturated market, I could see this being the end of the golden era of comic book movies. And soon, we may see the end of movie theaters themselves. Give it a decade or so. I mean, Disney didn't spend $70 billion just to get new characters to throw on the MCU. They spent that much for content to stream. And I think it's reasonable to assume that this could be an attempt for Disney to kill the movie theater experience. This is Tyler of Knowledge Hub. Thanks to all the patrons supporting this video.